Welcome to Live United. My name is Karen Knapp, President, CEO, United Way of St. Lucie County. In the area of financial stability, United Way focuses on specific issues, and those issues are addressed by many of the partners that we fund, as well as United Way. And today we have with us representatives from Children's Home Society. Welcome. Thank you. Hi. God, we have the chairman of the board. We've got you know the executive director. Um, you do so many wonderful things in St. Lucie County, but not everyone knows or understands your mission. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us a little bit about that? So our mission at Children's Home Society is building bridges for successful futures for children. And uh, we are really excited about November of 2017 because as a statewide organization, Children's Home Society is celebrating <coughs> its 115th birthday. Oh, congratulations. Thank you. Oh, okay, so here in St. Lucie County, though, what, what you were established a little later on, and because of that, so many people were helped in our community, and you have so many programs. We're going to talk about a few of those. Yes. You know, this being Adoption Awareness Month, um, what type of activities do you have surrounding that, acti you know, that event? Absolutely. So November is a big month. In addition to it being our birth month, that is also the month that nationally um, our we are recognized for adoptions and we call them for finding forever families for the children along the Treasure Coast. So each of the circuit courts, the judges will set aside a particular day on their calendar where we try to get as many children into their forever families as possible. So we make a big deal out of it in court. The judges allow us to bring balloons and treats and then we also have a big festivity, a big celebration and this year we're going to be at St. Lucie Lanes and we're going to have an afternoon of bowling and fun to celebrate the families all along the Treasure Coast who have partnered with us in helping to find forever homes um, for, our, for, our, for our kids. And so we, it's, it's really important to us. Children's Home Society was founded on adoption. The very first adoption done in the state of Florida was actually facilitated by Children's Home Society out of Jacksonville. So adoption remains very near and dear to our hearts. And so we're very proud of our program. And last year, which ended in June, we, we found 180 children all along the Treasure Coast are now in their forever families. And so we're just excited. And since July, we have 70 kids, more than 70 kids are in their forever homes. So we are well on our way to at least meeting or possibly even exceeding that number by June um, 30th of 2018. Oh, you have a great success rate. We do. But I'm sure there are many kids waiting, um, all ages, right? Um, so most of the children that are actually waiting adoption are, are older or possibly part of a sibling group. Right now, there are 45 children um, that are waiting for a forever family um, here on the Treasure Coast. And so part of our job is to identify what the child's needs are and, and what type of forever family he or she wishes to be a part of if the child is verbal and then we work with those families uh, you don't have to be on the treasure coast you can be anywhere in the state of florida and be interested in, adopt, in adopting a child the the good thing about adopting a child from foster care is it costs the family absolutely nothing there's a process that the families go through to meet the criteria to become a forever family, but it doesn't cost them anything. And there's a lot of support to work with the families when we're looking at uh, matching them with what we call waiting or recruited children. So 45 children need a forever family here on the Treasure Coast. Well, we know that there are a lot of people out there, <coughs> excuse me, interested, uh, and they'd like to learn more about it. I'm sure they can go to your website, or do you have um, any type of activity where you know, people who do have interest can come and find out a little bit more in we a non-formal, sort of a non-formal setting. So um, what they could do is reach out to our office. So our website is www.chsfl.org. I can also leave our office number. We schedule monthly orientation. So if someone is just listening and not really sure but would like to just know more information, that's what our adoption orientation meetings are for. We give the families some general information on adoption. They have an opportunity to ask questions in a very informal setting um, to see if it's something that is going to work for their families. And that adoption orientation is the beginning of the process. And then from there, if the families decide, yeah, I want to look at adopting a child from foster care, then we can get them set on the path for what the next steps are. 
And when I say family, a family could be um, a married couple. It could also be single. Um, single um, individuals are also able to adopt in Florida. And we say that you don't have to be perfect to be a parent. You just have to be willing and patient. So if you're interested and you want to uh, care for a child, uh, would they be more or less foster parents first before the adoption happens? It can, go, it, it, it can actually happen both ways. So um, some of our families are licensed as foster parents, and then from the fostering process, if the child becomes available for adoption, then they are able to adopt those children. You don't have to foster first to become an adoptive parent. Um, there is a long process, so there's certainly a lot of time for the families to go through the paperwork, and there's a background check, and there's an assessment of finances and of the home, mm -hmm. and then there's an opportunity to read a file, get to know a child on paper before we make introductions. So it is a very slow, methodical process mm -hmm. because we feel like once we make a placement as an adoptive placement, we want it to be the best possible match for our children as well as for our community families. Yeah, I don't blame you. That's great. I like that process. Well, you have a special person with you, Chief. I do. I'm Karen. <laughs> I know she didn't bring you along just because you're good looks. I know. <laughs> uh, she said you're a special person to Children's Home Society. What is your role? Well, I'm on the board, mm -hmm. um, and I chair the 5K. And um, the 5K is our, kind of our signature Treasure Coast fundraiser for the year. And uh, we're in our third year now, and we're, we're very excited about continually to grow this. And, oh, uh, when, when is it? It's April 21st, okay. 2018. And uh, we start at 6.30 with uh, registrations. We have a Zumba warm up at seven o'clock and then we get the 5K started at 7.30 and you're usually done by nine, 9.30. Sounds like something my daughter would be interested in doing. <laughs> yeah. She would try to encourage me. You don't get up that early? <laughs> <laughs> I try not to. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, what it, what's involved? Do you need volunteers for that event? or We could use what? some volunteers, but really we need walkers and runners. Okay. Um, it's, it's a 5K run or a 1K walk, and there's also a, a kids' fun run. So, it's open to all ages and all fitness levels, and uh, we're just looking for a lot of participation this year. Is that fun run where they squirt the paint out? At you? Or no, we, we or? haven't got to the paint yet. <laughs> um, this is, this is um, more of, it's at Indian River Side Park. Okay. And it, it's more of just a nice scenic. If, if you're a five, hardcore 5K runner, we got that for you. But if you're just looking to come out and support the Children's Home Society and, and have a nice scenic walk with some friends, we've got that part covered too. So why do you support Children's Home Society? There are so many agencies <clears throat> out there you could support, and I'm sure they've asked. Why Children's Home Society? You know, I started working with Children's Home Society as a road patrol officer over 20 years ago, and um, they have the Wavecrest Shelter in St. Lucie County mm -hmm. for runaway children. And um, that's, that's how I, I met Children's Home Society. And then after I became chief, I, I became aware of a, a population in St. Lucie County that, um, that I didn't even know existed for many years, and that was children who had transitioned out of foster care but were still in high school. And, and um, if you think about that for a few minutes, you, you, you realize that's a pretty special population. You, you got kids that are trying to get through high school. And I know how hard my kids struggle to get through high school, um, even with a very supporting family. And then you, you have these children trying to get through that part of their life, which is uh, trying, and, and all of a sudden they find themselves homeless. And, and they've aged out of foster care and they've got no place to go. And uh, I discovered Children's Home Society serves that population. So I wanted to get involved and serve, help serve that population. Mm -hmm. And WaveCrest is one of the United Way programs, yes. the program we fund. Absolutely. Um, can you talk, you want to talk a little bit more about that? Sure. So WaveCrest <coughs> is um, another facility that's managed by Children's Home Society, and it is located here in St. Lucie County on Selvitz Road. And it is the only runaway shelter for young adults, teenagers under the age of 18 on the Treasure Coast. Mm -hmm. And so any child that is that finds himself unsafe at home for any variety of reasons, they can mm -hmm. come into WaveCrest where we work with the teenager, we work with the parent. The goal is always to reunify the child back with the parent um, as quickly as possible with 
we also have counseling that follows the child into the home. And sometimes it's not a runaway situation. Sometimes as a parent, when you're raising a teenager, it can be very challenging. And so parents can also reach out to Wavecrest to say, you know, there's a situation going on at home and maybe my child and I need a breather from one another. And so we have what's called respite care where those parents can bring that teenager to our shelter for about 10 days. Again, the agreement has to be that both the parent and the teenager want to work with our counseling and work to rectify whatever that situation is in the home so that the child can return home. While they're at Wavecrest, they are required to attend school and they have chores. It's a very structured program, but it really is designed to prevent teenagers from getting further into either the juvenile justice system or the families becoming involved with the Department of Children and Families. And if you just think about the challenges that teenagers are dealing with today, it's so different. And then when I was in high school, you know, we didn't have social media, we didn't have as many outside influences as our kids have to deal with today. So having Wavecrest be there, having a seasoned staff, I mean, this program has been around for more than 20 years. I think our staff does a really good job of working with the families. We're connected with the schools. We have support of all four school districts, including Okeechobee. Um, they help provide transportation from the shelter back to the child's home school. So it is a program that we're very proud of and obviously couldn't continue to serve this community without the support of the United Way. And you also have a transitional living program. We do, we do. Transitional living is for 18 to 22 year olds and that is a second residential program and that program is located in Vero Beach. That just happens to be the place where we had property to have mm -hmm. the facility. It also mm -hmm. serves young adults. Um, like the chief said, 18 to 22. Some are 18 year olds who've aged out of foster care and um, didn't find that forever family. And some are just, say, uh, trez, I mean, um, Treasure Coast young adults that are still in high school, might be couch surfing, we call it, um, need a place for safe and stable housing. We also work with them to make sure that they complete high school. Some are able to continue to attend traditional high school. Some facilitate their high school diploma through the GED lab at the local Indian River State College. Um, but we work with them to make sure that once they leave our program, they're able to transition into the community, into their own safe and stable housing. Mm -hmm. And you have an event coming up on November 12th? We do. So November 12th is the Family Fun Day at St. Lucie Lanes. It's to celebrate uh, the families, the adoptive families who really partner with us. There's no cost. St. Lucie Lanes is, is really working with us well and doesn't cost the families anything to come out. It starts at 1 and it'll go to 4 and there'll be a little light snack included and we'll have some toys and some giveaways for the kids. It's just our way of saying thank you to those families who've opened up their homes and have given forever, for a forever home mm -hmm. to the adoptive kids all along the Treasure Coast. Mm -hmm. And speaking of technology, uh, you have a website that you do. Uh, want to tell people about? We do. So our website is www.chsfl.org. Mm -hmm. We're excited about the website because we've launched a new logo. So we used to be known mm -hmm. by the fuchsia in the blue and now we're a bright gold color and it's a nice gold star because we feel like everything that glitters is gold and so we've changed our color and so you will start seeing us more as CHS, more so than Children's Home Society. But we're really excited and the, web, the website is very easy to manipulate. You can find about, they can find out more about the other seven programs that we have all along the Treasure Coast, um, opportunities to follow an application to be a volunteer, mm -hmm. learn all about um, employment opportunities with the organization. Mm -hmm. So the website just has a ton, a ton of information. Mm -hmm. Well, I want to thank you both. I know we probably could talk another hour yes. about your organization, yes. your agency, and the programs that you run. Um, but we're going to have to say goodbye, but we do appreciate you coming, and we'll have to have you on again. And we'll be right back. I'm lucky. Let me help you with that. I get to do something I love. It has nothing to do with touchdowns or titles. Everybody bring it in. I get to play a part in the life of someone just starting out. How many of you think homework is just as important as teamwork? I help keep kids in school. Good. And that's the name of the game. My name is LaDainian Thomason. I don't just wear the shirt, I live it. Give, advocate, volunteer, live united. 
Hi, welcome back. Our guests right now are from is our guest is from Mustard Seed Ministries. We want to welcome Stacy Melanowski. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Glad to have you. Mustard Seed and United Way work closely together, especially mm -hmm. when we're looking at the aftermath of Hurricane Irma. Um, let's talk about some of those um, those ways in which we do that and how Mustard Seed benefits the community through your services. Not only the services you run day in and day out, but mm -hmm. also the disaster services. Well, yes, Mustard Seed is actually a first responder after disasters. We're part of the EOC team that when a disaster comes in our community, then we are first responders. And we do the non-food donations. So individuals that need to be able to receive services, we're able to work with the county and United Way and other agencies that allow us to be the ones that be first front line to be able to deliver those services. And obviously after disasters, we had quite a bit of disaster ourselves within our own location. So uh, dealing with that, and you know, about six inches of water throughout the building and we needed to move quickly. We had our Port St. Lucie location was up and running, but our Fort Pierce needed a little bit more time to be able to get us in place. And, and again, thank you to United Way, came out immediately and checked on us, but we were able to open within a week. And doing so, people were in need of food, people were in need of clothing that they had lost. We worked with disabled chase individuals. Those individuals were from everything, from anything that they needed. So whether it was furniture, clothing, housing, rental, but we knew the big push was gonna come. In this particular disaster, we were, most people were out of work at least a week, some out two weeks. Mm -hmm. For those of us that have maybe savings accounts and can kind of work through some of that, for our, our individuals that are right there and needing to go paycheck to paycheck, this was gonna be devastating. So we knew immediately that we had to be prepared and ready to go to start seeing these individuals because mm -hmm. probably most of September's rent didn't get paid and we already knew October was gonna be an issue. Sometimes it's just one minor crisis that can take a family and put them directly back where they were 10 steps to what it took to be able to stabilize them. So we were able to be the, that person on the front line taking care of that, mm -hmm. and we still are today. Right, if someone wants to access your services, I know you mm -hmm. said appointments, so we have to be aware of that. Right, we do require them to call in, and when they call in, and every Monday we take calls, there's hundreds and hundreds of phone calls that come in every Monday, and then we are able to screen them to let them know what they need to bring in, and make sure that they qualify for the services that they are looking for, and, and being able to make sure that we have a plan in place for them and how they're gonna move forward. Mm -hmm. And that really is the piece. So just to let people line up and come in, then they're gonna to have to go back and get the things they need. It really is important that we have a process that's gonna be really being able to really help that client, not miss two days of work, those types of things. So yes, the 465-6021 is our office line that they can call in. And right now, it's not just on Mondays, it's every day we're taking calls oh. because of our disaster. So we're working through that on a daily basis. Okay. Um, many people who have suffered loss, are, there are, they are looking for assistance. Many mm -hmm. of them, <clears throat> as you said, yeah. they can't make their utility payment because they left town. They spent all their money leaving town. Uh, and, the, right. and really, when you think of it, um, it, the disaster didn't happen. It wasn't that long ago. Right. And so people are still recovering from that. And they probably will be for how long, do you think? Well, when you look at that, like I said, one week's where the pay out of the home it throws everything completely off. So it, we have to work really tight with working with them on their budget of what they need to reduce for a while until they can get themselves back up. But more importantly, it's going to take at least, I think, at least between three to six months, depending on how much was lost per individual. If the two weeks that they lost, that means we know that September and October's rents are not gonna be able to be paid, mm -hmm. or they're gonna be determining, am I gonna make my car payment, or am I going to be able to pay this this month? And we go right back to square one with them. Mm -hmm. So I, it's gonna be a while, and as people are continually waiting for the insurance companies to fill, help them out, or whether FEMA is going to be able to get money to them, none of that has been in hand yet, with the exception of like food stamps and RD snaps. Mm -hmm. And you have a number of staff members who, of mm -hmm. course, are needed for these services, but you have a number of volunteers as well. Uh, can you tell people how, what they can do to help you through this? Well, uh, uh, helping us through this is right now there's funds coming in from various different locations, but more importantly, to be able to come in and help out in the organization itself, 
there's volunteer opportunities daily. Mm -hmm. So whether it's in the thrift store, it's in the social service end, in the pantry, in the garden, in the warehouse, it, there's not a place that we wouldn't probably be able to find you, whether it's a job sitting down or answering the telephones. And I'm very grateful to St. Lisa County Community Services and other volunteers that are helping us, at least in the social service end, being able to screen calls for us as we continue to see them every day. And you need more merchandise for your thrift shop? What do you need? Yeah, you know, when our store went down, you know, we had to get rid of a lot because there was a lot of water in the building. So that was six truckloads of furniture that went out the door. You know, the number one requested item in our thrift store is always beds. So um, that's going to be a tough one because we have quite a few families. We have 162 that we are aware of that have been displaced, but they're there motels or someplace else. They're going to need furniture, mm -hmm. and that's part of the service that we offer on a day-to-day -day basis. So we have put out quite a bit of furniture out in the community for those that had furniture destroyed. Mm -hmm. And so definitely, please call us. And as far as if you want to donate clothing, if you would like to donate furniture, and of course, monetary donations will never be turned down. Right, and you will come and pick out, uh, pick up the mm -hmm. furniture, so absolutely, um, they don't, it doesn't have to be dropped off. No. Right. So again, if you were to call our four six five six zero two one and let them know you have furniture to be picked up, we would be more than glad to come out and take it. And you have an event coming up. This is November. It Thanksgiving. is Thanksgiving. Let's talk about that. This is going to be a tough year, too, because we're already seeing a big drop in our donations because, you know, there's a lot of money going all over the community as well as out of our community because of what happened. And I mean, myself, I have shared in helping with those as well. So um, we are going to be serving about 6,000 meals with mustard seed on site on Orange Avenue, as well as doing about 4,000 home delivered. So with that, obviously, it takes money to be able to do that. But our volunteers, if you're interested in volunteering, please call our office at 465-6021. We can let you know what volunteer opportunities are available. We are doing two outside locations this year. So we will be doing St. Paul AME Church, which is over on 29th Street. And then we also have First Congregational Church, which is on Port St. Lucie Boulevard. Those are also two of Sarah Kitchen sites that we will be feeding in both of those locations. On Thanksgiving Day? On Thanksgiving Day. Okay, the recipients of those meals you were talking about, mm -hmm. 900 and some odd, uh, do they? those people come from all over the county? Um, and how does mm -hmm. someone get a hold of you to, to receive the meal? Well, you could call in. And, and we, okay. if you were to call in Mustard Seed, we have a line that we'd like you to be able to call to. And for right now, you can call them our main line, and we can take care of whatever it is that you are looking for Thanksgiving. If you are in need of meals and you need your six in your family, you call, we'll have those delivered to your home. Mm -hmm. Our deliveries runs between 9 and 1, so and we have hundreds of volunteers coming out that will line up and be taking those into the, the community anywhere in St. Lucie County. So are you looking for any more drivers? We're always looking for drivers. Okay. We're looking for drivers. We're looking for people that will help us in preparedness the day before. We're looking for opportunities at those two sites that we talked about on the, out, on the outskirts of between St. Paul and First United Methodist. Uh -huh. um, the First Congregational Church. Of right. Kansas, Besides Thanksgiving and disaster mm -hmm. assistance, you mm -hmm. also provide other services. Let's talk about one of those services. Well, one. You know, <laughs> one because I, we don't well, have like all day. About, we've already you, talked we, about running utilities. <laughs> but what most people don't know is that we also do preventative programs. So with, we have diabetes education. We have hypertension. We have a food pantry that we also have nutrition classes going in three of the days a week that are in our pantry. But more importantly, we're also in a process of being able to start our class in January in a program called um, Bridges Out of Poverty. It's a getting ahead in the getting by world. It's a, also a tool for us in helping families sustain. So not only have you found your job and you're back to work and you're paying your bills, let's, let's really help you show how you can really be able to maneuver yourself and working your way to a higher level of education. We will work with Career Source. We work with every entity in this community, helping individuals to be able to sustain and be able to look at their own mental model and how they have to improve themselves to be able to, to just raise their level of poverty. Uh, you know, you need to be constantly aware of what it takes to be able to get by in this world today. Credit scores and how we can help you make that happen. So that's another really a service that Mustard Seed offers in our community. And we look forward to being able to continue working with many organizations that will make that possible. And do you need help from the community? Because all these individuals who graduate from the Getting Ahead classes, they need um, 
they need support in the community. They need a job. They need maybe some volunteer work. Mm -hmm. Are there any other ideas that you have uh, that you, um, you know, that where the need would be to help those people so that they can go from your class to success? Exactly. Once they completed their class and they're, and they're working with us all along, we start, these are, a lot of our clients are clients that we have known. And as they're gradually getting better, it doesn't, there's not a light switch that turns off and says, oh, today you're great now. Mm -hmm. You're all good to go. I think we all learn as we go throughout the years. So to have mentors that would hire someone that would understand the struggles that they, where they were and where they're trying to go, I think businesses would be very eager to be able to take on one of these clients of ours that we're really anxious to take their, themselves. And the dedication that comes in, they had to commit to eight weeks of being able to come see us every week and go home with homework and do it in, and by the end, and they, they're very proud of themselves. And now to be able to get the community to get behind them. So if you have a business and have an open opportunity, please let us know because we have people that would love to move forward. But helping them with making education choices being able to be environments that they've never been in, you know, and we take a lot of stuff that I think we do day to day granted, mm -hmm. considered where we came from. Mm -hmm. And you have many collaborations. We mentioned the churches. Um, let's tell us how you collaborate with the churches because, you know, people ask for help. They go to the chur a church and they ask for help. Uh, but that church, they have their, you know, they have their own responsibilities that they're running right. day in and day out. So you collaborate with them so that you can assist those individuals. Um, Mustard Seed was started by four downtown churches. Mm -hmm. So if you go back to, to 1986, where we began, we're in our 30th year mm -hmm. in serving our community. Those churches really wanted us to be able to be a clearinghouse for individuals mm -hmm. that would knock on their door and want their rent paid. And in return, but there's got to be more to just paying someone's bill. And that's exactly why we were founded. So those churches, we still have relationships with. I get calls every day from churches. Can you help so-and-so? Because mm -hmm. we know that you're going to go that extra mile be able to find out, to validate why they need the help. But also, when someone doesn't have a family in our community and they have been, they're there facing a crisis, a church family is, is also a part of their being to be able to be a way that they can find that family that they need. Churches will come when I have pockets where I can't pay something because there's restrictions to those dollars. Mm -hmm. I also have relationships with those churches that I can make that phone call financially. Not all the time, but that's a crucial piece one for us that we rely on. They will come out, they will volunteer for us. They will pull us out of situations that I've got someone coming in, next thing you know, it's in the garden and I gotta have it ready in three days and in return, I can call on those churches also mm -hmm. to provide volunteers. The efforts are, are, are endless with them with what I need. Thanksgiving is a great time that we've partnered with them. They will be able to have people sign up that need help for, for food, mm -hmm. but they also will be willing to come out and volunteer of their time, and then be able to also help cook turkeys, you name it. Our churches are a very valuable part of us and our founding founders of our organization. Well, we're very proud to have you as a funded partner, um, and you're so easy to work with, and I'm sure that there are many people out there who really do want to help, especially around the holiday time, right. uh, and I hope that they contact you. And if you'd like to learn about more about Mustard Seed or if you'd like to volunteer, uh, you can either call Mustard Seed or call the United Way office.